Hi everyone, I have lived in Grand Prairie for the past 16 years more or less and today I would like to address the question, should you move to Grand Prairie, Alberta? Now in the past year it's no secret that lots of people have been moving to Alberta. I think the main driver of this is affordability and if you're one of these people who's looking to move to Alberta and considering Grand Prairie, here are some basic facts and my opinion on the city. So starting off with basic facts, uh, Grand Prairie is home to about 67,000 people. That's kind of the latest stat we have, it's very transient, but I wouldn't be surprised if we are closer to 70,000 again. Um, I'm not sure when the next census is. We are located northwest of Edmonton, which is the capital of Alberta, and we're about one hour from the BC border. The only comparable city north of Edmonton size-wise is Fort McMurray, or as locals call it, Fort Mac. However, Fort Mac is more isolated, less economically diversified, and while it may have some nicer public amenities, it doesn't have the same wide array of retail options that Grand Prairie provides. Now, you might have guessed, but in the name is the word prairie. We are on the prairies at an elevation of about 650 meters above sea level. Grand Prairie is surrounded by a lot of small towns and hamlets. North of town, we've got the hamlet of Claremont if you drive for about 5 to 10 minutes. Sexsmith is about 20 minutes north of town, Grovedale is about 20 minutes south of town, Wembley is about 20 minutes west of town, Beaver Lodge is about 30 minutes west of town, and honestly, all of these are places that you may want to live if you want even more affordable housing and don't mind driving into town whenever you need to. Although, if I were to put in my two cents, just don't pick Grovedale. Apparently, the region that Grand Prairie serves has a population of 280,000 people, which would explain why we have better retail options than Fort Mac, because lots of people come to Grand Prairie to buy stuff. Now, as for bigger cities, we're about a four and a half hour drive from Edmonton and about an eight hour drive from Calgary. So while Edmonton is doable on a day trip, for Calgary you'll definitely want to stay overnight at least one night. Moving on to job prospects, which is probably the reason a lot of people are considering moving to GP in the first place. As you might guess, the most profitable jobs in the area are related to GP's main industries of oil, natural gas, and forestry. It's really quite an industrial town. Don't expect to get rich as a talented hairstylist or musician, but if you're a welder, an instrument tech, or a power engineer, or you're fine with working hard and getting dirty, this might be the place for you to make some money. Although GP is no metropolitan hub, and there isn't a concentration of high-end retail businesses, due to the number of people from the area it services, there is a sizable number of retail jobs even if they're not very well paying. Of course, employment ties directly into affordability. So let's go over the good things about affordability in Grand Prairie. First of all, the latest statistic on median household income is about 120,000 Canadian, which is pretty high. In Grand Prairie, you can get many high-paying jobs requiring little prior education, and if you have an education in a relevant field, then that job could be even more lucrative. Second of all, the housing market is very affordable. The latest average house price was a bit over $300,000 Canadian. House prices are roughly about $200,000 less in Grand Prairie compared to Calgary for the same house. Renting is also very affordable. GP is one of the cheapest places to rent in the province, according to recent reports. One bedroom, one bathroom goes for about $1,000 a month. And third of all, there's really not much to do, so this implicitly helps you save money. Now, the bad side of affordability. Utilities can be very expensive in the winter as it gets cold. If you're not on a fixed rate, you could see your December and January bills up at like $800. Groceries are a bit more expensive, especially fruits and vegetables. Now let's go over some of the tax information. If you compare Alberta tax bracket to example the BC tax bracket, Alberta is a better place to live if you're making a high enough wage. For example, if you're making over $91,310 for the 2023 tax year, it's better to be living in Alberta. But if you're making below that, you'll actually pay less tax in BC. And we're talking about income tax here. The sales tax, actually, is much better in Alberta. We only have 5% GST. There's no PST or HST. Overall, I would say the GP is a pretty affordable city, even though there are a couple factors that will hurt you. 
Now that that's out of the way, let's get on to one of the biggest topics, which is weather. With six months of winter, roughly two and a half months of summer, and roughly three and a half months of blah, Grand Prairie definitely offers you a chance to suffer from seasonal affective disorder. Honestly, you should pick up a winter hobby because you're gonna get pretty depressed sitting inside all winter. Usually in the winter, we will get a couple weeks of temperatures in the low minus 30s, even touching the minus 40s. However, in the summer, we are also likely to see a week or two of temperatures in the low or mid 30s. The fall is very pretty for the couple of weeks it lasts as well. Winters are also quite snowy. Apparently in December and January, we get an average of over 3 meters of snow per month in total. So that's why I have to shovel three times a day for a week, huh? It can get quite windy sometimes as well as we're on the prairies. However, we don't see a lot of rain. You can also see in this daylight hours chart that in the deep of winter, you're getting a maximum eight hours of daylight a day. That's another reason it can get pretty depressing. However, in the summer, it's going to be bright out until like 10 p.m. Our summer days are really long and enjoyable. Now let's talk about the culture. First, the political scene. Grand Prairie is conservative and has been for a long time. Traditionally, the majority of residents will vote conservative federally and UCP provincially. It really is a redneck city at heart. As for diversity, Grand Prairie is nowhere near as ethnically and culturally diverse as, say, Calgary. However, there are strong sub-communities of many different ethnicities. Many people of different cultures and heritage have come to the city for work. The Filipino community in particular is quite well known. If we look at the age demographic, the demographics reflect that Grand Prairie is a working city. In my experience, Grand Prairie is a city with a lot of families. The young adult population is transient to some degree with many wanting to live in a bigger city or leaving for university. Those that remain after a few years either came back for work or started working right after high school, or they may have even dropped out of high school to start working. When I graduated, my class's graduation rate was something like 86%, and that was considered high. As for seniors, some Grand Prairie residents may retire in or outside the city due to family in the area, but many people of retirement age will often choose to go live somewhere warmer, such as Kelowna. Now let's look at public infrastructure. Starting off with facilities, we have one indoor swimming facility. While it's unfortunate that there's only one place to go swimming year-round, it's really quite nice and the pool is Olympic-sized. There's a lazy river and a kid's water park, as well as a surfing area. In the same facility, there's a gym, basketball and squash courts, as well as a short running track. There are two city-operated ice rinks in the town, and there are more facilities scattered throughout the town, mostly in and around Bear Creek, which is the creek and trail network that runs through the city. In Muscacipi Park, which is the biggest park in town, located downtown, there are tennis courts, a spray park, a skate park, basketball courts, playgrounds, a museum, mini golf, and an outdoor swimming pool. There's also a pond you can skate on in the winter. The trails there connect to a trail loop around the reservoir, which allows you to walk to the local college, Northwest Polytechnic. The library is also quite nice, and it's in the same building as the art gallery, which has free admission. Now let's talk about public transit. Unfortunately, public transit is extremely poor. The system has low ridership as a result. City Council made changes recently that decreased the efficiency of the public transit system. Basically, if you move to Grand Prairie, plan to buy a vehicle and make sure it has a block heater. It can take an hour to make a trip via bus that would be a 10 minute drive otherwise, and it likely won't even get you to the door of your destination. Check out this description on a listing for a room rental in my subdivision. Even Facebook Marketplace knows there's no guarantees once you get on a bus. Let's talk about city taxes. Property taxes are, if I'm not mistaken, the city's biggest or only revenue source. Therefore, they are very high. A similar property in Calgary will often be $1,000 less in annual property taxes. For example, my 2007 house that is 1130 square foot with no yard is $3,300 a year in property taxes. Here I'll throw in a quick note about federal taxes, because living in GP will qualify you for the Northern Residence Deduction, which gives you a bit of a tax break each year. It's basically the government feeling sorry for us for having to live here. I'll take whatever I can get. As for roads, the roads are not great. With the harsh weather, 
plus the high volume of gravel trucks, chip trucks, pulp trucks, and all manner of large trucks driving through the city, potholes and bumpy roads abound. It's not that the city doesn't repair the roads, they do, and construction season seems endless throughout the summer, but the repairs don't last long. Currently, there's an unbelievable square pit in the intersection of 84th Avenue and 108th Street. I hope they fix this one quickly beyond putting up an uneven pavement sign. Now let's talk about entertainment in Grand Prairie. GP has some options, but they are limited compared to those of a bigger city. Starting with plays, GP has a local live theater with a dedicated community. I haven't gone in a while, but they usually have one production being developed or advertised, and generally the reviews are positive. As for music, the biggest music event is the Bear Creek Folk Fest in the summer, which happens at Muscosipi Park. Occasionally, some bigger names from decades ago come to town, but you'll definitely have to travel to at least Edmonton, if not Vancouver, to see relevant artists. As for places that are accessible year-round for you to spend your leisure time on, we have escape rooms, axe throwing, an indoor amusement center, a couple of arcades, a couple bowling alleys, one board game cafe, a dinosaur museum, and there are also horse races in the summer which are free to go watch. As for sports, as you can imagine, we are in Alberta, we are in Canada, so hockey is a pretty big thing. Our local hockey team is called the Grand Prairie Storm, and during the regular season, you can go watch them at the downtown Bonnets Energy Center. Often enough, Grand Prairie also hosts curling events. For example, last year around October, the Pinty's Grand Slam of Curling had a stop in Grand Prairie, and a few years ago, I think we also hosted the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Anyways, there's curling here to watch if you're into that as well. Now let's talk about shopping. Maybe I should have mentioned this first, but Grand Prairie has a Costco, which honestly sometimes seems like the city's saving grace. However, we don't have an IKEA and we don't have a TNT. There are very limited ethnic foods for sale. You'll be relying on several small shops plus the Asian foods aisle at Superstore. There is one decent mall in the north of town called Prairie Mall. There are several thrift stores, really only two good ones in my opinion, and the downtown is pretty cute with some unique shops typical of what you'd expect in a downtown. As for restaurants, we have many of the chain restaurants like Earl's, State in Maine, Brown Social House, etc. Ethnic eats are available, but options are generally limited and or poor. There are a few sushi places, but unfortunately none of them are as good as you will find in a bigger city that is also closer to the ocean. There are a few Vietnamese places, I haven't gone in a while, but Phu Tayo on the south side was the best in my opinion. There's unfortunately no Korean fried chicken place and no dim sum. There used to be a good Indian place, but it closed. There are still a few Indian places, but not very good in my opinion. Takara Ramen Bar is a Japanese and Korean eatery that I would definitely say is one of the best places to eat in the city. Their ramen has outranked all of the ramen I've tried in even Calgary so far. Bubble tea places have been erupting recently, with the city getting its first cocoa a couple of months ago. I believe altogether there are about five bubble tea places. My favorite one is Macha. It has a really cool vibe and decoration inside. Just call first to make sure they're open. As for clubs, there's no club scene in Grand Prairie as far as I understand. The bars are generally the place to go on Friday night. Or if you're a true GP resident, multiple nights of the week, especially when it's hockey season. I personally don't really go to bars, but residents seem to enjoy better than Fred's and the Crown and Anchor. I like to say in GP, the most popular activities are going somewhere less populated, or going somewhere more populated, or forgetting where you are altogether. Let's get into that. As for summer activities, camping, fishing, hunting in the fall, and golfing are probably the most popular activities just from talking to people and knowing what people like to do. There are walking and biking trails throughout the city, especially throughout Bear Creek Park. Those trails are decently long and are usually well maintained, if not as pristine as Calgary's and Vancouver's paved trails. If you travel south of town about 5 minutes, you can access the Dunes Trails, or the Wapiti Nordic Trails which are otherwise used for skiing in the winter. Hiking is one of my favorite pastimes in the summer. Within one hour, unfortunately, there's really nowhere to go. If you drive 2-3 to three hours, you can get to Trailhead and Grand Cache region. Grand Cache hikes are really all about going up a mountain and coming back down. You'll get a good workout, but there's really not a lot to see other than the view from the top of the mountain. If you go into BC, you can drive about 3-4 or four hours and reach a Trailhead in Tumblr Ridge. Tumblr Ridge has a bunch of gorgeous hikes. There are some easier ones and some more difficult ones. However, most of them are really stunning visually and I would recommend trying some of them. 
Early in the year, you can access Bergeron Falls. I would suggest this one to start as it's not too hard, but also not too easy, and you get to see a very impressive waterfall. I would recommend to wait until at least July for most hiking otherwise. This is because you probably don't want to be mucking around in snow and mud at the top of the mountain. Other popular summer activities include dirt biking, boating, quadding, and I guess outdoor swimming as well. Cutbank and Red Willow are two locations I would recommend to go to late in the summer. It takes about an hour to drive to either one of these. There are lakes such as Moonshine Lake that are okay to swim in, but honestly are not very nice. In my opinion, it's better to swim in a deep pool along a river than a lake up here. And we wouldn't be complete without mentioning perhaps the most popular hobby in the summertime, which would be drinking. In the winter, I would definitely say skiing is the most popular winter hobby. You can go to Wapiti Nordic for cross country and Nighthawk for downhill. Both of these are close to town. Another popular destination is Powder King, which is four hours away in BC. You can also go sledding, there are hills in town, or there are also hills at the ski hills. Ice skating, ice fishing, and skidooing are also popular winter activities. And we wouldn't be complete without mentioning probably the most popular winter activity, which would be drinking. Any time of the year, it is also a very popular choice to go away to Edmonton or Calgary for the weekend or for a few days. Another thing you might want to do in your spare time is volunteer. There are lots of opportunities because many organizations in the city actively search for volunteers. As I don't have kids in Grand Prairie, I don't have too much to say about education. The only thing I've observed is that Grand Prairie schools have opened at a consistent pace with its developing of new neighborhoods. The local college recently became a polytechnic. There, you're able to get some trades, smaller degrees, and university transfer programs. At least in my experience, the quality of education is not great, but the cost savings for getting your piece of paper or completing the first couple years of your studies while living in a smaller town and going to smaller college might be worth it. Now let's talk about healthcare. GP has two hospitals. One is quite old and the other recently opened. It's nice to have a new facility, however, GP has a hard time retaining quality doctors. Unfortunately, there are more bad doctors here than good, based on my experience and the experience of others. Just try to stay healthy if you lived in Grand Prairie. As for specialists, you will have to travel to Edmonton for a lot of specialist appointments. It's even difficult to get a GP here in Grand Prairie. For example, I don't even have a family doctor right now. As for gyms, GP has a couple chain gyms like Planet Fitness, Snap, and Orange Theory. It used to have more, but many of them have closed, like Anytime in Motion. There are several privately owned gyms, particularly on the west side. Safety is a big concern for many people moving to Grand Prairie. Crime and drugs are one of the top concerns. While these are problems for sure, I haven't personally experienced or seen much crime or drugs. The worst I've experienced is someone swiping the driver's side mirror off my car, and that was in College Park, so honestly I'm not surprised my fault for parking there. If you keep your head on straight, hang with the right crowd, and avoid some of the bad areas of town, you'll be fine. For example, a friend told me a story about seeing a person shooting up at a dumpster below their unit in their apartment building, as well as a crazy story about a police raid on one of the units. However, when they told me which apartment building this was and where it was in town, I was not surprised. The truth is, the majority of communities are quite safe, in my opinion, with a high concentration of families. There's just a few bad pockets to avoid. One good thing is we really don't have shootings or stabbings very commonly. Looking at you, Edmonton. I can't remember the last time that happened in Grand Prairie, honestly. You will see drug busts in the news every few months, though. Personally, I think the drug problem is a result of high wages and boredom for working class individuals. Thus, my comment about keeping your head straight and not getting involved with the wrong crowd. Now let's go into my overall opinion. There is a reason why the average GP resident is a guy, probably white, in his early 30s. The nature of the high paying jobs in the city and the political and cultural climate are generally more agreeable to this demographic. In the end, you need to figure out what your needs are. If you're willing to sacrifice a bit of quality of life to make some financial progress, GP is a great option. If you can't live without going to a special event every weekend, if you want to make a career in a higher-end profession, eat dim sum once a month, or be surrounded by a more left-leaning environment, then you're probably better off spending a bit more cash to live elsewhere. 
However, on the whole, GP people are decent. A lot of them mind their own business, but if you're stuck in the ditch or have a flat tire, someone's going to come and help you. As long as you find community in Grand Prairie and a couple of outdoor hobbies, you'll be able to withstand the long winters and eventually make enough dough for a comfortable retirement in Kelowna.